Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. We're going to discuss how knowing that one derivative exists actually shows that the next derivative exists. And this all has to do with um, the idea of curl basically being zero if the derivative exists. First of all, um, it, let's look at this equality here. We're taking a limit as, um, and let's make this as actually a limit as b approaches a. A limit as b approaches a um, of, of this right here. We're assuming that a is constant. Um, this right here is the derivative. We could think about, but we could think about this as a function of b, a function of b in here. Um, and um, and uh, we're taking the limit as b approaches a. Now notice in the last video where we had like something like f of like f of a was equal to the integral. Well, um, that could be replaced also with thinking of the limit as we approached it because we're kind of assuming continuity of that function. So here, at least away from a, we know that the derivative exists um, even when we're not equal to a at all. And that is, um, that is due to the fact that a is constant here. And this is just a quotient rule with uh, and with the function f. Um, really, and so we're we're good there. Um, in fact, we're so good with that for, for the same reason we actually have a um, that we actually have a curl um, equaling zero, and so we kind of get the same limiting type idea as we had before. Um, and uh, we have equality on the equality on these limits. So, which means that the derivative itself is um, uh, equal to you just mentioned one thing though. See this thing, this is like taking literally this function with like, you know, but it's a limit instead of plugging in, um, plugging in the value a. Um, so instead of plugging in a, we're uh, taking a limit to a. And so we have like our function and then over here. So it really looks like the exact same thing as the last video. But the nice thing about this is, is if we multiply this bottom, we get z minus a squared. Um, so z minus a squared, and then we have a constant up here. So I'll just replace it with one. If that's f of a. If we unadd these fractions or subtract, if you look at the integration of just this part, um, if you work out what dz is, it's this. Um, notice I multiplied by i instead of which we notice noticed before was the same as taking the derivative here. Divide by this, we end up just getting. Um, uh, we actually end up getting uh, one over cosine plus i sine theta. To move it to the numerator for complex numbers, in this case, since it has a magnitude one, absolute value one is just to make take the conjugate. Um, so it's basically this that we're integrating, but it's over a loop and it's gonna go to zero. So really that's gonna be gone in the integration. So we can just simplify it to this. F prime of a is just one over two pi i times this. This is actually very beautiful because we've written the first derivative in terms of an integral where we just have f and this thing right here, where we know in particular the curl of this part is zero. Um, now, if we take a look and think of a difference quotient with f prime, um, we can put that difference quotient and transfer the, the integral over using this equality right here. Um, and play with it a little bit. And we'll notice, at least for this particular difference quotient, this curl is zero because the curl, because of quotient rules and stuff. And this is just a constant. So that's not even playing into the curl calculation at all. Um, so really, um, we're only focusing on the curl of f again. We don't need the curl of f prime at all. Just f, just way back to f here. And, um, and in this calculation, using the similar ideas to what we had before, we can actually show that it doesn't depend on the, the radius that we choose, and um, and uh, we can and we can even show, in particular, that this limit um, exists, and we can kind of play with that a little bit. Um, there's a little bit to do, but these are just this is just an intuitive picture of what's happening, but in the end, we get that this limit exists, so that the second derivative exists. 
thanks to Green's theorem, we know that if the first derivative exists, then the second derivative exists as well. Well, using that same kind of induction, we get all derivatives exist if just one derivative exists. Amazing feature for complex functions. Um, if one exists, you get all of them existing. In other words, if the Cauchy-Riemann equations hold, then all of the derivatives exist. Thanks for watching.